Just water this morning. Mm. I drink water all night. It's my night glass. Let's keep any dust or whatever. I believe in dust mites. Okay, well, you know, anyway. Anyway, that's what it is. <clears throat> Look, uh, just real quick, okay? Uh, I right, hear this. It was within arm reach. I'll tell you a little something. I'll find out if I can find it, my little thing here. Uh, in fact, this is going to be, oh, this is going to be a little religious, okay? It's for all you, all you, uh, when I say religious, I mean, uh, okay, I'm in Africa, they, they enamored with this Christian thing here in Africa, I don't know why, but uh, let's do the Christian way, if I could find what I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. <coughs> it's raining outside right now. Oh, I guess it stopped. You could have heard it. Maybe this is a good time to do this, to, uh, you know, while it's raining and water and all the rest of that stuff. Because we're going to talk about um, Moses. Well, we're not actually going to talk about Moses, but you know, that whole story. You know, Moses, a little bit of baby, putting the basket down a big river, going out of the river, and then you know, some some uh, some Egyptian, you know, uh, people that's in the palace. They pick him up, you know, and they say, "Hey, look, cute little baby, baby, baby." They bring him to the palace, and so you know, because he's an orphan, whatever it is, you know, he uh, you know he grows up in the palace and in, 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 within royalty. Now, if you know anything about Egypt back then, I'm talking specifically about what's the, uh, the uh, they call it the Book of the Dead, but it's a book of coming forth a day and night, something like that. All you Egyptian scholars, you know, y'all you can jump on that, okay? Now, if you grew up in this household or, or in this palace, then they had a thing called the Negative Confessions, you know, from that book. And they had, I forget how many, I think like 22 of them, it was a bunch of them. I had some of them translated, see that? What well, negative confessions like that, you know? I had some of them translated. So, so in other words, here I have the I have the original uh, whatever the hard the Egyptian whatever language, and then you see it in the color. I have the translation into English. <coughs> so, so Moses would have grew up in this in this household in this in this palace hall, whatever they call it, in the royal whoever. And um, every once in a while, I say every night, but I wasn't there, I don't know. But every once in a while, you know, somebody would come along and they would, they say nightly, but let's make like it was, I don't know, every three days? Mm -hmm. I like three. Three days, every seven days, once a week. Somebody would come up and they would ask questions. Just being asked a question like, have you been angry without just cause? What's the question? Have you been angry without just cause? And then you answer, nah, I ain't did that today. I ain't did that in the last week. I ain't did that in the last three days. Have you terrorized, uh, 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 um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, and then you have to say things like, I have not polluted myself, right? I have not terrorized anyone. You have to make these confessions, you know? I have not stolen grain, you know? So somebody, wait, have you stolen? I have not stolen grain. Um, I have not uttered lies, right? I have not uttered curses. I have not, I have made none to weep. I have made none to weep. I like that phrase. Okay. I have not blasphemed. I'm just, you know, but, uh, I have not attacked any man. Okay. So these are the kind of things, right? So remember, so somebody would ask you, have you attacked anybody? Say, I have not attacked anybody. Now here's the trick. If you know somebody's going to ask you these kind of questions, that when you're about to attack somebody, or you're about to steal from them, or you're about to lie, that you, it's somewhere in the back of your brain going to say, hey, you know, uh, the, 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 whoever it is. Let's let's do modern times. Let's say if these same questions. If your if your little sister or your uh, or, or or your or your cousin, your, your your young cousin, you know, like your four year, your five year old, make like they can read a little bit, you know, or, or their six year old would ask you these questions. Then if if you know they want to answer questions all the time, then you wouldn't want to lie to your to you know to like your seven year old you know, nephew. So that's, that's not what you want to do, you know. You want to don't want, want to lie to your nine-year-old, you know, your younger sister, right? So you would think about that. Well, maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't lie. It's not that you can't lie. It's because you know somebody who who you love and respect is going to ask you, "Have you done anything 
or negative today? And you've got to answer that question. And that puts you in a different frame of mind. Like, say, for instance, if you know, if you're, if you're Moses, you're growing up with this, and then, then you go, you, you lead your people to war, the water's parting, and you go through the Red Sea and all the rest of that stuff, and then you go to the other side, and you go up in the mountain, this, uh, what's the sign, or whatever, you go up there, and you, you, get your, you get your three tablets, you know, with your, with your five commandments, or each of them going down, one breaks, and you say, ah, and you go down, and then you end up with just 10, ten commandments. Not questions, but commandments. So you know what happens with, with human whatever. If you tell somebody, uh, you know, don't lie, don't you dare lie. What's the human being going to do? They're going to go out and lie. If you ask them, have you lied? They have to think about it. Nah, nah, they got to do mental gymnastics there. So it's a different paradigm. Okay, Let, let's call it. Let's call. Let's call it the the ten the commandment way. The um, Ah, uh, she went up to the mountain, but let's, let, let's call it, let's call it the white mentality way, okay? <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. Even though it may not, this was the white people that went through all this stuff. This is the white mentality way, because it got passed down. Because remember, the, 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 the Bible is uh, audited and audited, but it's, it's altered for the, for, the, for, the, for the age, you know what I mean? So, so you had the, you, the original Egyptian thing, then, then, then other powers outside of Africa come and they alter it, right? To suit their, I don't know, their whatever they suit, right? And that's it. Now that's the Old Testament, right? Now let's get let's get to the New Testament. So what's happening? The uh, the, the the you know since they didn't go the Egyptian way, they had to go the the, uh, the 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 Moses way, right? The people are toiling under the Moses law, you know Moses, uh, you know laws, you know the, the commandments. And then somewhere along the line, they go like, man, this is just not working for us, right? And then all of a sudden they say, Jesus comes along. They say, hey, Jesus, oh, yo, hey, hey, yo, son of God, right? You, yeah, well, I, we are all son of God. I know, I, I know Jesus is going to say that. Okay, I know you're trying to be humble, whatever. But you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Jesus, we don't quite understand this, man. Yo, man, we got these Ten Commandments, and it's just really difficult. We just really, could you, could you make like Ten Commandments or something for, for dummies or something like that? Just let us know what's going on. And so Jesus says, oh, man, you guys are just, I don't get everything that you need to, to whatever is right here on earth. All you got to do is just, <sighs> okay, listen, I'm going to make it easy for you, right? Since you can't deal with ten, how about two? Two is good, right? Okay, one, love God, you know, the great mystery, the creator, whatever, with all your heart, soul, and whatever have you. So you got you to respect and love, you know, oh, it's all love for, for what created you, right? Makes sense. They say, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So that's not a commandment, right? It's not a law. It's a suggestion. <laughs> a strong suggestion from the Son of God. Well, we're all sons of God. Because he's talking to men. It doesn't matter. Hey, a bunch of women. Hey, we're all children of God. I'm talking to the master now. Okay. So then he says, and the second one, okay, here's, here's the thing. 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 Do unto others as you have them do unto you. That's not a commandment. It's a suggestion. The suggestion is this. If you don't want somebody to, dare I say, spit in your face, then don't spit on nobody's face. If everybody's doing it, you see how that works, you know? And, the, and, and, and to me, this the, the update for this would be uh, would, would be Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. when he when he says, um, when he says, justice is the guarantee. No one is mistreated. No one is mistreated. What happens when you when you do something like 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 kill somebody or hit somebody? You're mistreating them. So the so the first thing about justice, or well, it's not a commandment, a suggestion is is a guarantee. No one is mistreated. This is definite justice. And those who need help gets the most you know uh, 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 constructive help possible. Okay. Guarantee that no one that, that if if you, if you are if you need help because you was mistreated then you will get the most constructive help possible, okay? So that hey that makes sense to you right? It's easy. It's like like the Ten Commandments, right? I mean like the two that that J J C said, right? Okay, great. So now that we got all that set and done, let me tell you something. One of my one of my many uh, tasks in this world. Was that I had this job, uh, or job. I had this, uh, this task. I was the uh, production engineer for WBAI Radio. You know, the, the Pacific Radio. It's, it's, a, it's a big time radio station in New York. It's a community radio station, big time thing. Anyway, now one of my tasks is that uh, you know, when, when, um, because I was a production engineer, which means that well, I, I had to do a lot of uh, feeds coming in. Feeds coming in, like some, like say, for instance, the, the one of the times is when when was that? Ronald Reagan was was running against uh, Mondale. 
Mondale. Kamani was this was this was eighty four. Okay, this was eighty four. Now in this thing, it was interesting because I uh, the, there's a thing called a VU meter. You know what I mean? The, the, I forgot what it was, whatever it was, VU meter, right? And, and you're supposed to sort of keep it at 12 o'clock high, you know, you go too much into the red and it distorts or whatever have you. But if you watch Ronald Reagan, who was trained, who was, who was trained in radio first, his VU meter was like just humming right there, right there in the middle with that nice, you know, baritone voice, it just humming just like that, you know what I mean? Mondale was all over the place. This is the feed coming up all over the place. So I said, I said, this is interesting. And because of this, and I had been doing radio at that time since this was about 80, what did I say, it was 84? That means I had been doing radio for over 10 years. And I had never really paid attention. But then I, I started paying attention to my own VU media. And my own VU media, same thing, would be like just humming right up there like that. So what I'm saying to you is that when you're distorting or like it goes into people's ear or like that and you don't have that grandfatherly voice, right, then what happens? Well, you know, people, it, it turns people off from the inside, you know? So I'm saying, I'm suggesting that Mondale lost because Mondale didn't have a good voice or a good whatever. Okay, say I'm wrong. No problem. Let's get him out there. Mondale lost anyway. Ronald Reagan is there. Now here's the thing. Uh, this guy, Leonard Schlein, I think it's Leonard Schlein, he wrote this book, this woman-centered book, about this. it was really, really good. But he was, he, I, I asked him, I asked him because he was being, being interviewed from one of my producers in, my, in, the arts, you know, in, the, in the arts department. He came out as an author. We did a lot of author interviews. And I just happened, I was an engineer, I think I, I forgot where I was there. Anyway, so I was talking, I was talking to the author. And I said, well, you know, you're, he was a brain surgeon too. And so he says to, he says to me, you know, Human beings are visual people, you know what I mean? They're not really mental people, they're, they're visual people. That, that, that you get arrested, you know. It, it, it. When you, vi you get, you, let's put it this way, TV, the problem with TV and stuff like that is because it arrests all your, sens all your sensors. The reason why people like books on tape and, and podcasts is because, you know, you can drive, you can do everything, you can clean your house and, and still listen. Okay, so that's why, that's why that is. But, he, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that, and then I realized Ronald Reagan did something that was very strange to me, because like I said, I was taking all these leads, and then one thing came across that he was in, I think it was Bitburg, was it Bitburg, Germany, where they have all those, those Nazi graves? He went there for no, it seemed like for no particular reason, and had a, a let's call it a photo op at Bitburg, the graves for the Nazi graves, you know? I said, that make no sense. But then I thought, not right away, but later I thought about, wait a second, that's a photo op. And where's this photo going to? That photo exists someplace. And so all your white supremacists, you know, people who follow that, that system of, uh, of, of, of Anglo-racist white supremacy, they looked at that and they say, our guy, he's telling us it's all right to, to elevate the Nazis or whatever have you. That's the, no, he didn't say that in so many words, but that's the picture. So when, so, so, so when you see, uh, uh, well, now with Trump, it's worse. I'm not really down on Trump because Trump is just doing what he's doing. He's, he's a logical extension of, of whatever is going on. But when he doesn't correct things as well, but he has, he's not presidential. When, when, he, when his photo ops, not his, photo, his verbal ops, his, his verbridge, his verbridge is always like, you know, this Anglo racist white supremacist system uh, propping up thing, then that's what people get. So, it's, so there's the problem. The problem is, 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 is not what people read, but what people hear and the visuals. That's the problem. So I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in this kind of the, the presidential field right now. Now I'm jumping to something else. Because a lot, of, some of the people, like say, for instance, you look, listen to a Marianne Williamson, you listen to a Tulsa Gabby, I'm naming females out, but you listen to Andrew Yang, you know what I mean? They're very sort of calm, you know what I mean? They're sort of calm. So I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I have to start looking at this. I, I don't see them much, but I'm not really in a studio, so I have to start looking at see. I, I like to see the pattern, you know, the wave, and see how it goes, see who's who's reaching what. So anyway, that's just uh, something I really had to get off my chest. Why? Because I, I, I just, it's amazing to me. Like, why do we go for commandments when we should have our own uh, internal fortitude, our internal thing? I mean, uh, uh, Amos Wilson was saying that uh, uh, back in ancient, you know, this sometimes is why you do study history, uh, you know, African civilizations. It's like they didn't have any, any police or whatever have you because everybody knew 
it's sure this was world was smaller, but the whole region knew what was right and what was wrong. You was principled, and that's what carried your society along. Our society can, our society we're living in right now, can never go because it's still is jagged and people are, are, are it's fighting. So it's not it's not a, a, a simple thing. And when you lay down laws, when you say you're going to lay down a law, what happens? Laws can be subverted. Laws can be gamed. Systems can be gamed. As soon as you write it down, say, oh, it's written down. Let me. And then you write something else to undo that. that, that, that and you and then it's all in that. It's not in it's not in the spirit. You know, it's 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 not in just simple logic. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Don't mistreat anyone. That's it. It's a message for me. T from the Patterson's taking the train to do that. Let you know what I only suspect right here. Hmm. At a desk of the ADOS. American descendants of chattel slavery. <laughs>